Hi, friends. There's nobody around, so I can take my mask off. I and some of my friends here at the library have built a fort today. That's because we're going to have a fort story time. Are you ready to sing our hello song? All right, let's go. Hola, that's right. Let's sing it and say hola instead of hello. Hola, friends. Hola, friends. Hola, friends. It's time to say hola. Good job. And now we'll sing it in Hawaiian. And in Hawaiian, if you want to say hello or goodbye, you say aloha. Aloha, friends. Aloha, friends. Aloha, friends. It's time to say aloha. Very good, friends. So in today's story time, like I said, we are going to be reading stories about forts. And I'm doing it in a fort. Isn't that fun? And at the end, I'm going to show you how to build a fort just like this. All that I used were newspapers and tape. That's all you need. You can make your very own fort. And if you want to make it just like mine, you can throw a blanket over the top. So let's read our first story. Friends, I thought it might be better if I got closer to the camera so you could see the pictures in the book. But our fort is still behind us. This book is called The Better Tree Fort by Jessica Scott Karen. Pictures by Kin Leng. Russell's new house was better than his last one because of the giant maple tree in the backyard. It had great big limbs and a trunk so wide, even Russell's dad could not wrap his arms around it. Look how big that tree is. It's so big. Russell said to his dad, let's build a tree fort. Russell's dad said, I don't know much about building. He looked up, up, up or tree forts, he added. Russell said, I'll draw you a plan. What's this, Russell's dad asked. A balcony to watch from. And this, a slide for a quick escape. And this, a skylight to see the stars. And this, a basket to haul up our sleeping bags and binoculars and my big book of birds. Let's go to the lumber store, Russell's dad said. Oh man, they've got big plans. Do you think they're going to achieve them? They roamed up and down the aisles. Russell's dad looked lost until a man in an apron came to help. Russell showed him the plan. The man in the apron sold them tools and lumber, and when they got home, they spread everything out in the backyard like an enormous puzzle. Have you ever been to a store that looked like that? Russell nailed his plan to the fence near the maple tree. Russell's dad took a long time to get started. He measured things over and over again, and there were four more trips to the lumber store. But slowly, the tree fort started to take shape. First the floor, then the walls with the cutout window. The roof was particularly tricky. Looks like it's coming along. When his dad was done, Russell painted the trap door Robin's egg blue. It's Perfect, Russell said, breathing in the sweet smell of fresh cut wood. But there's no skylight or balcony, Russell's dad admitted, or escape slide, he added. 
It's perfect, Russell repeated. Looks pretty fun. They ate peanut butter and jam sandwiches for dinner in the tree fort and slept up top in their sleeping bags as the night sky filled with glittering stars. Then they thought that they might have heard an owl. The next morning, as Russell was spotting birds from his tree fort, he heard a hammer and a table saw. A construction crew in hard hats was building something in the backyard three houses over. Russell watched all day from his tree fort. What were they building? He gasped. <gasps> what do you think they're building? They were building a tree fort. Only this tree fort was bigger and straighter. It had a slide for quick escapes and turrets like a castle. It even had real working lights. The construction crew tested them on, off, on, off, on, off. That's a pretty amazing looking tree fort, isn't it? When the tree fort was done, a boy the same size as Russell came into the backyard. He nodded at the foreman and then climbed up into the tree fort. The construction crew packed their tools into a van and drove off. Russell scrambled down his rope ladder and over to the backyard three houses away. He stood at the bottom of the better tree fort. It was so large, it blocked the sun. Hello, Russell called. The boy Russell's size stepped onto the balcony and peered down at him. Russell said, I'm Russell. He pointed over his shoulder. That's my tree fort. I'm Warren, the boy said. Come on up. Isn't that cute? Russell climbed the spiral stairs and looked around, astonished. There was a radio plugged into an electrical socket there was a rug on the floor and shelves filled with dishes. There were bunk beds with pillows. There was even a skylight. Warren turned down the music. Would you like something to drink? He asked. I have apple juice. Russell said, yes, please. He added, you have a very nice tree fort. Warren said, my dad ordered the plants. It looks big in there, doesn't it? Russell finished his juice. He had been taught to rinse his dishes when he was done. And because this tree fort had everything, Russell asked, where's your kitchen sink? A kitchen sink with running water up here? Warren scoffed. <laughs> Russell shrugged. He said, I'm sure that somewhere there's a tree fort with a kitchen sink. You're right, Warren said with a frown. There probably is. Russell asked, do you want to see my tree fort sometime? Warren nodded, but he was still thinking about the better tree fort with the kitchen sink. When Russell got home, his dad was cutting the lawn. He waved as Russell climbed his rope ladder. When Russell reached the top, he waved back from his trap door. He watched his dad mow. When his dad was done gardening, he joined Russell up top. They looked out the window at the tree fort three houses over. Russell's dad said, there will always be a better tree fort. Russell smiled and then he said, but not a better dad. Isn't that cute? The end. All right, friends, let's sing a song now. This song it will be very familiar because it's just like if you're happy and you know it. But this time we're gonna sing it about tree forts. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. If you're happy in your tree fort, clap your hands. If you're happy in your tree fort, clap your hands. If you're happy in your tree fort and you really wanna show it. If you're happy in your tree fort, clap your hands. If you're happy in your tree fort, wiggle your fingers. If you're happy in your tree fort, wiggle your fingers. 
If you're happy in your tree fort and you really want to show it, if you're happy in your tree fort, wiggle your fingers. All right, last one. If you're happy in your tree fort, yell yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo. If you're happy in your tree fort, yell yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo. If you're happy in your tree fort and you really want to show it, if you're happy in your tree fort, yell yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo. <laughs> That was fun. For our second book today, we're going to be reading The Fort. Can a Pirate and a Prince Learn to Share? By Laura Perdue. Pictures by Adelina Lirius. As the prince strutted toward his castle, he daydreamed about the royal feast he was planning. He imagined music and food and fun with friends. But when he crossed over the moat to begin decorating, the prince discovered that the castle was not at all like he left it. What's this? A useless treasure map scribbled on my invitation. The prince paced around the great hall and stepped on an eye patch. Who is using his castle? Oh no, a pirate has invaded my castle. The prince tidied up and rid the castle of all things pirate. He wasn't about to let a rotten pirate keep him from hosting his royal feast. The next day, as the pirate paraded toward her ship, she daydreamed about the swashbuckling voyage she was charting. She imagined overflowing treasure chests and adventures on the high seas. But when she walked up the gangway to ready the ship, the pirate discovered that someone else had been aboard. Who is it? Do you have any idea? an invitation to a silly feast written on my treasure map. The pirate clumped around the galley and tripped on a crown. Shiver me timbers, a prince has raided my ship. The pirate swabbed the decks and rid the ship of all things royal. She wasn't about to let a pompous prince keep her from sailing away to find treasure. The prince returned the next morning only to find that once again his castle was not at all like he left it. That dreadful pirate has made a mess of everything, he cried. Late that afternoon, the pirate discovered that yet again someone had been aboard her ship. That puffed out prince came back, she bellowed. When the prince arrived at his castle on the day of the royal feast, he yanked the tablecloth off the flagpole and smoothed it down on the tabletop. Then he heard a voice outside, a pirate voice singing a sea chanty. Blow me down, the pirate hollered. What are you doing on my ship? <laughs> Nonsense, this is my castle. And if you don't stay out, I will put you in the dungeon, declared the prince. He stomped onto the drawbit bridge to defend the castle. The pirate seized her sword from him to stop the mutiny. Never, I will not abandon my ship. If you don't leave, I'll make you walk the gangplank. <laughs> Uh-oh, it's a showdown between the pirate and the prince. You can't, I'm planning a royal feast for friends. The prince waved the invitation. No pirates allowed. The pirate grabbed the paper and I am going on an adventure in search of buried treasure. No royalty allowed. 
<laughs> Who wants to live on a stinky ship anyway, shouted the prince. I'd rather go to the moon. That sounds like fun. I kind of want to do that too. They both eyed the fort. I, she said, a voyage into space. On a spaceship, he asked, imagining being the mission commander, guiding their spacecraft and orbiting Earth together. You see that shooting star up there? Yes. On this spaceship, she agreed, imagining being the chief scientist leading space exploration and making new scientific discoveries. Close the hatch. The two astronauts prepared the spaceship for launch. She inspected their space helmets. He adjusted their oxygen hoses. She tested the robotic arm. He studied the mission instructions. Mission control, ready for departure. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Looks like they're blasting off. Look, and there they are in outer space. The end. Well, they found all kinds of fun ways to play with their fort. All right, friends, let's sing a song. You might recognize this tune, too. Bumping up and down in my little fort. Bumping up and down in my little fort. Bumping up and down in my little fort. Won't you go to my fort with me? Waving to my friends in my little fort. Waving to my friends in my little fort. Waving to my friends in my little fort. Won't you go to my fort with me? And now my favorite thing to do. Reading a book in my little fort. Reading a book in my little fort. Reading a book in my little fort. Won't you go to my fort with me? Good job, friends. All right, friends, our last story today is Jasper and Ollie build a fort. Hey, Ollie, how's this look? Should it be bigger? Yeah, it should be bigger. <laughs> I think that's Jasper, and I think he's a squirrel, and I think that's Ollie, and I think he's a sloth by Alex Willen. Whoa, look at that sign. Jasper's super stupendous fort of awesomeness, and this says Ollie's fort. <laughs> Jasper and Ollie build a fort. Hey, Ollie, what do you want to do today? <laughs> Jasper has a lot of energy. Wait, I know, we should build a fort. What do you think, Ollie? Do you want to build a fort? Sounds good to, wait, I have an even better idea. We should each build a fort and then see who's the best. I will pick out the perfect spot. <laughs> I think squirrels might run a little faster than sloths. This seems like a good spot. What do you think, Ollie? Looks good. I'll go get my tools. This is really starting to come together. Wait, I should add a second floor. Jasper's really excited. <laughs> this fort is looking pretty sweet. Wait, it's looking a little too sweet. I need to protect it from intruders. Wow, Jasper got a lot done, but look at Ollie. He's still planning. Oh, now he's getting to work. Intrude if you dare. Creak. Uh-oh, the fort is making noises. Wait, I need to add some support. And this sign says, crocodiles wanted. I think he dug a moat. <laughs> well. And there's Ollie, working away. That should just about do it. Wait, Ollie, it's time for our lunch break. That sure was tasty. Wait, 
What are people going to do in my fort? Tire swing, check. Twisty slide, check. Rock climbing wall, check. Creak. Uh-oh, the fort is making creaking noises. Wait, I need to add more support, says Jasper. He's not much of a planner, is he? That's better. Wait, I almost forgot the final touch. This may be the greatest fort ever. Okay, Ollie, prepare to be amazed. Behold! Creak! Wait, I need to add more. Crash! Support. <laughs> Oh, his tree fort fell. Poor Jasper. Hey, Jasper, do you know what my fort has? Room for two. Ollie invited Jasper into his fort. Isn't that nice? You know what, Ollie? I think your fort is the best. <laughs> Here's Jasper's pile of rubble. <laughs> the end. Now it says Jasper and Ollie's Fort. <laughs> that was the cute one, huh? And if you want to learn how to make your own fort, I'll show you how. Okay, friends. Now to build our fort, we're going to be using newspaper. I have a pile here of newspapers that the library was going to recycle, and I thought I'd just use them this way. I also have tape. And then I have a blanket that I'm gonna throw over the top of the fort to give it a little more privacy. So to begin, we unfold our newspaper and you wanna start with about two sheets. I have two separate sheets here. So lay them flat and then beginning with one corner, you wanna roll it as tightly as you can all the way across. building our fort. So now I'll build two more of these and then turn them into a triangle. Okay friends, now I have three newspapers and I'm going to tape them together into a triangle. So. I'm going to flatten the tip of one and flatten the tip of the second one. And then we're going to take a piece of tape and attach them. So I've got these two taped together and now I'm going to add the third side to my triangle by flattening the edges once again and then taping them together. The beauty of building a fort out of newspapers is that it's something that you already have laying around and instead of just getting rid of it, you can give it a whole new purpose. And it's something to keep the kids busy. Maybe when they come visit, just save up your old newspaper 
and then tell them to build a board out of it. They'll have something to play with for the whole day. So you see, I have my first triangle built. And now we're gonna build, roll a lot more and build some more triangles before we start assembling our fort. And since I have some friends here who are gonna help me, I'm gonna put on my mask for this part. Wearing masks helps keep everyone safe. So I'm gonna put mine on, my friends have theirs on, and let's get started. All right, friends, thank you for joining me for story time today. Let's sing our goodbye song. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.